Welcome, my dear students and other passers-by to this Chapter 9 video, continuing coverage of molecular geometries and bonding theories. For this one, I'm going to continue where we left off on our previous video, linked to in the description below or somewhere, discussing the geometry or shape of molecules. So as it turns out, methane, CH4, ammonia, NH3, and water, H2O, all have tetrahedral electron domain geometries. However, there's something unusual about these molecules' individual bond angles. If you look at methane, for example, its ideal bond angle tetrahedral right here is 109.5. Whereas for ammonia, it's about 107, and for H2O, it's 104.5 degrees. So what in the world do you think is happening here? Yeah, as you might guess, lone pairs take up more room than non-lone pair groups. Thus, the more lone pairs you have around a central atom, the more constrained or decreased the bond angle will be between all of the other non-lone pair groups. So the lone pair in ammonia increases the bond angle between that lone pair and all of the hydrogens, which decreases the bond between each of the hydrogens themselves. And by analogy, similar thing happens happens in the H2O. That takes us then to this beautiful lecture problem. The three species whose formulas are shown right here have hydrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen bond angles of 105, 107, and 1.9 respectively. I want you to explain this variation in their bond angles. I'm not going to answer that question for you, but I suspect given the information I just provided, you can probably do it healthily on your own. So, as we discussed back in chapter eight, link to floating over my head or in the description below, when there is a significant difference in electronegativity between two bonding atoms, their bond will be polar because polarity is an uneven sharing of electrons. You got one atom that's very electronegative bonded to another one that is not. The electronegative atom ends up hogging electrons towards itself. So you have an uneven sharing of electrons, hence the bond is polar. Now the polarity of entire molecules, however, is a little bit more complicated. An entire molecule's polarity is a product of both the polarities and geometries or shapes of its individual bonds. In other words, there are times when you might have an individual bond that is polar by itself, but the overall overall molecule as a whole is not because the polarity of one bond ends up canceling out the polarity of another bond on the opposite side. So the net polarity ends up being zero. Makes sense? So how in the world do you determine if a molecule is polar or not overall? Well, we follow these steps. First, draw the molecules Lewis structure spreading out its atoms as far as possible on your two-dimensional paper or writing surface. Second, draw arrows between every atom in the molecule going from the center atom out to all the surrounding atoms or groups in each bond like this. And third, answer the truck question, which I'll explain momentarily. So as it turns out, I'm actually lying a little bit when I say that I'll explain this momentarily. What I will do is I will show you me doing this and applying the truck question as I answer some of these examples in this problem. I want you to predict whether each of the following molecules is polar or nonpolar using the steps I just showed. Now, if you have no idea how to do this, rest assured there's a link in the description below to a separate video in which I will answer this. I hope that you'll check that out. Until next time, my dear students and others, please have an enjoyable rest of your day. Yeah.